they would say to themselves, well, the timber industry hates us and the environmentalists hate us, so we must be doing something right. Well, actually, I wanted to shake them and say, no, if both sides hate you, it's probably because you're doing something wrong. You should try to get a system where both sides love you instead of a system where both sides hate you. Well, the more I looked at the Forest Service, the more I realized that Congress had designed the Forest Service in a very interesting way so that the more damage they did to the national forest, the bigger the budget they got. They were rewarded for doing harm, for doing damage. And that hasn't changed today. The bigger the fire problems they get, the bigger the budget they get for putting out fires. So they don't really want to solve the fire problem at all. Now, of course, everybody in the Forest Service wants to solve it. They tell themselves that, but their incentives push them in the opposite direction. Now, on top of this, the Supreme Court had issued a decision called the Chevron decision, which I don't think is one of the dirty dozen, but was still a bad enough decision. They ruled that Government employees are, by definition, platonic despots. That is, they are experts who automatically make all their decisions in the public interest, and so therefore we should not be allowed to question them. The burden of proof was on us to show that they made any mistakes. And even though their incentives might be to screw up, they, had, they were good intention people, and so we should trust them to make the right decision. Well, that did not make sense to me. Uh, in fact, I managed to convince a, a circuit court to come out with the opposite decision, saying that the Forest Service had an incentive to screw up, and so they were doing that, uh, and they were lying to us in the process, uh, and we needed to change them. Unfortunately, the Supreme Court overturned that on some other grounds. But, so I thought about how do we change the Forest Service so that they have an incentive to do the right thing? And I came up with several ideas uh, that I put together in, in some papers. I'll give you an uh, indication of how to get the papers in a minute. But the first idea is the trust idea. You know, Montana state lands, are, many of them are held in trust for the schools. And this, the trust idea works as the opposite principle of federal lands. The trust idea of a trust is that you assume if, 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 you, if your grandparents set up a trust on your behalf and there's a trustee managing it, the assumption is the trustee is going to do everything they can to rip you off and steal the money from you. And so the burden of proof is on them to show that they're doing a good job instead of on you to showing that they're ripping you off. So the whole idea of a trust shifts the burden of proof from the public who are being ripped off to the managers who uh, are in a position to rip you off if you're not careful. In addition to the trust idea, I think we need to have more checks and balances. And one important check and, check and balance is to give the trust or the managers good incentives. Instead of rewarding them when they do a bad job, reward them when they do a good job of management. Now, all of these ideas are described in detail in a paper that uh, is available on the Cato website, cato.org. It's called A Matter of Trust. If you go to cato.org slash policy analysis, one word, uh, you'll be able to find my papers, uh, including this one called A Matter of Trust, that describes this idea in detail and including proposing that we pick maybe a dozen national forests across the country and test this idea on those forests just to see what it'll be like uh, and before going for with it nationwide.